Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for inviting me to Denmark. It's a real pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be here to, and to talk to so many other experts from around the world about such an important topic. Let me just tell you a little bit about RAP before I start. I mean, RAP is the Waste and Resources Action Programme. And I like to say that the A in RAP is for action. We're about making things happen, about making change. And that's the focus of what I want to talk about today. We started in 2000. We were set up by the UK government who wanted to catch up with the rest of Europe on recycling. We've made a lot of progress. We're still more to do. But we've broadened our remit to the circular economy and resource efficiency as a whole. And we set up as a charity in 2014 to think about how to reinvent production and how to rethink consumption and how to redefine what's possible through reuse and recycling to create a, a more circular economy, to create a, a business unusual. But today is obviously about food. And we heard a bit from Carolyn earlier, for every two tons of food we eat, we throw away another ton. And that matters because one billion people go hungry while two billion consume too much, and by 2050, there will probably be another two billion people to feed. It also matters because of climate change, and if we keep producing and consuming food as we do now, we estimate that by 2050, that will contribute to two degrees to global warming. So from a, a social, an economic, and an environmental point of view, there is nothing more important. If we don't fix how we do food, we can't fix climate change. It's as simple as that. But it's a huge economic loss as well. And that 1.3 billion tons of food that we throw away across the world, it's worth $940 billion. That was already mentioned earlier. I and mean, when we try to understand why we throw away so much value, we think the reason is that people don't understand the true cost of waste. They just see the visible cost, the disposal costs. But in fact, the true cost is 10 times that. And that's because of the lost materials, the lost energy, the lost labor, and the lost water. And we worked, RAP and the World Resources Institute worked together to produce the business case for reducing food loss and waste. And that showed that for every dollar that's invested in food waste prevention, there's a $14 return in terms of the savings, the economic savings. So it's a huge saving that can be made. And as the, the chief executive of Tesco said, reducing food loss and waste is a no regret strategy. It really has a huge return. So it's all about targeting, measuring, and acting. But how do you do that? What, what's the solution? Well, you have to look at the whole food system. Carolyn showed a complex diagram earlier of the, of the food system. You have to take action all around the system. You can't just act in one place. And to give you an example of, of that, I want to talk about the humble potato. And I want to tell you the story of 100 potatoes um, the first time I met Minister Larson was at one of his food dinners where you have to prepare your food first. My job was to prepare the potatoes, so it's a very pertinent topic, the potato. But this is the story about a, a hotel and its potatoes and how many of the 100 potatoes that were first of all grown reached the mouth of their clients. And it starts in the field. In the field, two potatoes are lost through disease Nine more are lost because they're the wrong shape or they're too small. Three are lost because they're not stored properly. And then when it comes to packing and transport, another 17 are damaged. So that means that by the time you reach the restaurant, only 70 of the 100 potatoes reach the restaurant. But when they get to the restaurant, it gets worse because nine are spoiled in the kitchen and then 20 are lost through preparation. And okay, some of that might be potato peelings. But finally, 40 get to the plate. And then the person eating them throws away 15, so that only 25 of the potatoes actually get eaten from those 100 that started. And the only way to tackle this is in all of those places. You have to engage all the parts of that supply chain. And that means engaging business. It means engaging citizens. But it really needs having the evidence and insight to support that, and then measuring and monitoring the change. And I want to tell you a little bit about the UK around this. In the UK, we waste 10 million, 10 million tons of food every year. And to give you a, you know, it, what does 10 million tons of food look like? Well, if I'm in the UK, I'd say that a million tons of food would fill our national football stadium. I guess it would probably cover this entire complex of the, the parliament here, 1 million tons of food. So you can imagine 10 million tons of food. I can't even imagine 1.3 billion tons of food that we throw away across the planet. 
But we throw away 10 million in the UK, and 30% of that is from the supply chain, and 70% is from consumers, from householders, from people like me. And so to take action, we have to work in the supply chain, but also work with consumers. The really frightening part is when you look at the, the food that consumers throw away, 60% of it, nearly two thirds, could have been eaten. So perfectly good food that could have been eaten. And we think, well, they spent 4.4 billion, sorry, they, they spent 13 billion pounds on buying that food. Um, I think we just heard that India was wasting $15 billion worth of food. Well, the UK is wasting a similar value of food. And then that the carbon associated with producing that is around 19 million tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent. And that's the same as the emissions from one in four cars on the UK roads. So it's a huge, huge challenge, it's a huge priority. What we're doing to tackle that is working with business and working with citizens, with consumers. With business, it's through an agreement called the Courtauld Commitment, Courtauld 2025. And this has 150 signatories to it, and they have committed to reducing food waste in the UK by 20% by 2025 compared with 2015. And these are 90% of grocery sales are covered through these people. It's 150 organisations in total. But they've committed to not just to improve their own supply chains, but to improve the people who buy their food, which is where most of the waste is. So this is the likes of Tesco and Sainsbury's, some of our supermarkets, who are saying, we're going to sell less food. They're committing to selling less food by doing this and to helping their, their customers save food. They can do that by better packaging, um, packaging controlling portion sizes, making it easy to freeze food. There's also some very innovative packaging, for instance, with the potato again, um, something that measures the perspiration rate of the potato and then decides how much respiration is needed in the packaging. So a sort of customised piece of packaging to maximise the life of the, the potato, but also by communicating with their customers, and they help to do that. The other part of this, though, is directly to citizens themselves. And this has been done in the UK through a, a campaign called Love Who Take Waste, which we've been running since 2007. And the theory of this is to, first of all, tell citizens about the fact that they are wasting food. Most people don't think that they waste food. In fact, nearly two-thirds of people, if you ask them in the UK, don't think they waste food. And I'm afraid even I waste food. Everybody wastes food. You have to admit that is a problem first. So having drawn attention to the food problem, it tells them why it matters and then tells them what they can do about it, about how they can, can prevent food waste. It tells them that for an average family in the UK, they're, they're throwing away £600 worth of food every year. Um, that's the same as I spend on my gas, to give you an example. So I could have free gas if I didn't waste food. It's a really big business case. But here behind are some of the, the recent campaigns. During Lent, we had a campaign to to give up binning food waste for Lent. We also had a campaign with the Ice Age movie about focusing on freezing, um, which was very successful. And we're currently running a, a campaign which is all about matching bits of food that are left over together. It's a sort of a dating campaign, dating lettuce with something else that's left over to encourage people to use it. And we, if we're successful with this, we'll save 10 million tonnes of food waste by 2025 which will make a huge difference. That will put the UK on the trajectory to meet 12.3, to give you an example. So really important to us. We also need to engage, though, with experts. And again, working with WRI and others, the Food Loss, Waste and Accounting Standard is a really important document standard for how to measure food waste. We can't make change if we don't measure. So that's a way of engaging experts on measuring. We also work, we're a part of the Refresh, a European project, which has created a community of experts to bring together all of the experts in Europe together to help to make that change. But that's a bit about the UK, back to the world. And I said our, our, our vision was a world in which resources are used sustainably, and we mean a world, not just the UK. So I, I'm proud to be one of the 12.3 champions. I'm very proud that RAP is working with WRI to support them on that as well, and that we are seeing how we can help the world move towards that. We've looked at what it will take to get to 12.3, and at the moment, roughly 10 countries are engaged in food waste. We're probably engaging with 10% of the world's population. But if we get to get to 12.3 by 2030, then we'll have to build skills and expertise on food waste reduction, and we'll need 20 countries engaged by 2020 and 50 countries engaged 
by 2025. So that's what RAP wants to help do. Um, and I know that the 12.3 Champions Group will be saying more about this in September and talking more about how we measure our progress towards this. But for us, this is how RAP can help. And we're trying to identify countries which either have very high food waste, high per capita food waste, or have very high populations, and seeing how we can share what we've learnt in the UK and help them to make similar changes. And we are working in partnership in, in quite a few countries across the world. We're working right now very actively in South Africa and Mexico to try to set up similar approaches through voluntary agreements with business and through consumer campaigns to help them reduce food waste. Um, there was a call, can we help India? I would love to help India as well, if we can. Um, but this is about driving change. The other part is an international food waste atlas. And this is again about measuring. Um, so we can use this to help businesses measure their food waste reduction, but also the countries that we're working with to track their progress. And ultimately this will help track progress towards the 12.3 target. And this is something that RAP is paying for out of our own resources, our contribution to this, but working with WRI and others to achieve it. So in conclusion, this is all about, for me, uniting in the food waste fight. And this is a call that I'm putting out in the UK. RAP can't do this alone in the UK. RAP can't do this alone in the world. We all need to come together. We need more resources. It's going to take a lot of funding to do this, to help those countries to change, to make the difference. So my call is, what can you do to help with the food waste fight? How can you help us and the others that are trying to do this to make that difference and achieve 12.3? Thank you.